Hey guys, back again. Um, so today we're going to be talking about a really interesting piece actually. Um, it is the Lacia 2011 version from Good Smile Company. Now uh, the reason why I want to talk about this is because there's actually not a lot of information on the one on the left which is the limited version. Now um, I'll bring in the figures here just to kind of show off uh, exactly how they are. Now they look very similar it's because they are very similar. Uh, realistically, the only really big details that I could point out is that the limited version is a little bit cleaner on the paint job and um, the colors are a lot more muted, whereas the uh, new 2011 version, or um, I guess, yeah, the 2011 version has um, a brighter paint job as well as some of the details on the uh, black monolith or the black monolith in general, uh, which is this large um, piece in the back, that's basically a little bit of a lighter color than the um, than the black monolith here. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about this figure, first of all. Um, I think it's important to just kind of uh, check out the box first. So, um, a little bit of history behind it. Um, Beatless is an anime that was created by uh, Red Juice, I believe. Um, he is uh, most popularly known for um, doing the character designs or like the the character concept art of um, Guilty Crown, and so uh, I actually brought Inori here to go ahead and um, do a comparison beneath her or beside her, um, I guess, new age modern sister. Uh, but we'll check that out in full view later. First, I want to talk about the box though. So um, what's interesting about these is that um, so on the right we have the 2011 version, which is basically more well known as the uh, Lacia. 2019 version because prior to last year this figure was a limited release for Wonderfest 2011. Now um, I believe it retailed for around uh, like 9,000 yen and this figure much or the newer version is around uh, 11,000 so you probably or 11 yeah 11,000 so it would be around like 100 110 to 120 bucks uh, right now it's going as of this day um, like August 18th I think but um, as of this day it's going for around 150 to 180 new and uh, used you're probably looking around 120 um, this one on the other hand there is not a lot of information about it out there uh, I was kind of curious when I first saw it myself so I picked it up and um, luckily I didn't pay that much so I paid about um, like $90 total after shipping um, that's a steal by the way because I think I got it off some sort of Goodwill page or something, but um, it was just an interesting thing because I just I already owned this figure, but I wanted to see what the difference was with this one. So um, let's just go into the box really quick. So uh, I want to move this somewhere where it doesn't fall and um, break. So uh, yeah, all right. So first off, uh, let's take a look at the 2019 box. So the 2019 box is actually really um, clean. It's uh, very just well done. It's um, done in the style of the anime. Um, just kind of like, uh, sorry, one second, um, with that, uh, kind of pattern, the blue pattern, and then, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's very simple, shows off the features of the figure. Uh, here it is from the top, so it just says Lacia 2011, it's a 1 scale figure, and, uh, there you go, so let's just put that to the ground. So, and then here we have the, um... 2011 version, like the actual exclusive one. So what's cool about this one is that, well, most of the, the you know the differences are in the packaging, but this is actually the box that Lacia would come in, like in universe. That's kind of like so they're really keeping it in the tune of being in universe. There's a really nice uh, uh, gloss and matte um, silhouette of Lacia here, and it says, um, you know, it has some uh, like details right here. So basically, it just says like. Um, here, I'll try to focus right there. But it's talking about um, how, like, you know, kind of like how in Hot Toys they have a um, kind of description of who worked on the project. But this one also has a lot of uh, just kind of jargon about the actual universe. So a high intensity suit, which is the clothing that she wears. She's a quantum communication element. So she's an advanced AI. If you haven't seen the anime, her ability is basically she can control like uh, magnetic waves and she can um, kind of um, the black monolith itself, which is it's a weapon and it talk and it uses she uses it to like release electromagnetic pulses or hack like um, frames and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, and then meme frame is like <laughs> it's not like you know meme, but like meme frame is basically like the main frame that um, Higgins, which is like the main AI, kind of like kind of rolls over. So unfortunately, like you know, like uh, like Guilty Crown, it suffers from style over substance because 
stylistically it's a great anime, but substance wise it's a little lacking. But um, yeah, so it's really cool because it has all this like kind of stuff. Um, I actually don't know if that actually does anything, but um, it's just really nice presentation. What's cool about this side too is there's a bunch of shipping labels and stuff. And what's funny is the shipping labels doesn't really, or I think this one is an actual um, label for like Mandarake or something. But some of these shipping labels are actually like um, kind of like fake or like they're they're printed on there, so it's not actually like you know. Um, like a real shipping label. It's actually supposed to be like, oh, this is a shipping label for Lacia for you to use. So it even says like Lacia meme frame where she was made and also like the company and stuff, which is really cool. So uh, enough about the outside of the box. Let's go ahead and check out the inside of the box. So from the inside, there's just this latch that you would undo. And also you get this really nice presentation. So it's all about presentation with this, um, this, uh, Wonderfest version and basically it says uh, content static sensitive and it says like blah 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 and then attention content static sensitive because you know Lacia is a um, more of a uh, she specializes in like hacking and um, electromagnetic waves and that's kind of like her thing so that's basically how the inner Lacia box is so let's go ahead and rip this out hopefully I can get this on camera uh, I tried to do it a little bit more cleaner this time just because this is a nicer figure and I wanted to talk about it a little bit more in depth compared to the other one. But um, yeah, so this is the Lacia box itself. Uh, it's really simple. It just, you know, you cut to break the seal and you would take Lacia out. It's a lot less um, complex than the newer 2019 version. But what this release also comes with is this very nice booklet. Now the booklet itself, it comes out right here and then you have sort of this kind of protective layer over it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough information to tell if there was supposed to be an illustration or something here, but as far as I can tell, there is an included one, but it does have the notches to hold a piece of, um, like, kind of paper or whatnot. And uh, just for dexterity's sake, we'll throw Lacia back there. Um, so there's Lacia right there. And then let's go ahead and talk about the book really quick. Um, the book itself is actually supposed to be like an owner's manual. So that in and of itself is really nice. So here you can kind of see um, the catchphrase or the tagline where it's boy meets girl. And then, you know, the story begins there. And then, yeah, and the Lacia logo is really nice. So go ahead and flipping through the book. It's uh, really cool because it just says, I trust in your smile. I won't care whether you are soulless or not. And uh, that's basically what he says, the boy says, I forget his name, but um, the point is, it's really cool. And then it just basically is a book about Lacia herself as a HIE, and then um, some of the concept art that was involved in making this, um, this figure, as well as some of the talks about the Black Monolith, because the Black Monolith transforms from this kind of big rectangular thing into this large um, pulse cannon. So uh, that's pretty cool right there. So a lot of CG modeling. Um, this book also talks about um, the other HIEs. So HIE is kind of like their AIs, um, like kind of like Android people. And then they're very like self, uh, what's it, self-aware. Um, so this is the, one of her other, one of the other main HIEs. So there's Kokia or Ko, it's like Kyoka. It's supposed to be Kyoka, but um, uh, it basically, she specializes in like warfare. So her uh, weapon which is the blood prayers is more of like an actual weapon as opposed to like a technological weapon. And then there's Snowdrop who specializes in sort of like, um, uh, what is it like hacking into hacking and like controlling other units. So that's Emerald Harmony. And then, um, there's Saturnus and she's, um, I think she's hacking as well, but honestly, I think they all hack, but like this is, um, in the anime, they don't really talk about how, important she is because she doesn't really do much but um yeah so that's interesting it's a gold weaver it's more of a sewing machine which is really nice there's just some good stylistic here they're actually missing one girl um that i noticed it's um shit it's the other sister the the main villain of the series like has or like the main antagonist is uh the other sister and they're missing her in this lineup i guess but um yeah, and she has, like, electric hands, but, um, and she runs really fast. Uh, so here's just some more stuff about it. Here's, like, Project Lacia, some really nice art. Uh, Red Juice definitely did a lot of nice work on this one, a lot of concepts. Um, you know, how posing works, uh, a lot of, like, details and whatnot, the details in her suit. This page is actually really cool because it's talking about the figure design and how they went from, uh, concept to, uh, 
you know, the final product, a lot of the topography of how they do these kind of things in um, figure 3D modeling. And this is also an excerpt from Beatlist. So this is basically the story of Beatlist. Um, if you can read Kanji and um, Hiragana Katakana, just Japanese in general, and that would greatly just kind of fill you in about Beatlist itself. Um, just some more stuff about it. Um, yeah, so that's basically the book itself, and that's one of the big things that kind of makes this special. So, um, other than that, we'll just go ahead and bring in the 2011 version right here. So, here they are side by side. Um, have you noticed, um, like, the figure itself does have some problems. So, for example, like, this is very not attached. It It's very reliant on kind of stressing itself. Uh, this one is a little bit better. Um, so she just, she barely touches the t uh, the handle of the black monolith and she's supposed to kind of hook onto it. Um, but unfortunately, they both suffer from that problem. Also, this kind of isn't a problem, but it's more like a feature, I guess. But the, the skirt armor just kind of floats there, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, this one, I noticed that like some of the skirting is a little bit off. So you can kind of see from a side view, like her skirting right here is super out, while this one is a little bit more at a different angle. I think that just might be a factory thing. Um, also, like, you know, you'll kind of notice that the base right here is super clean. Um, a lot, like the weathering is a little bit more, um, what's the word? A little bit more cleaner. Um, this one, it's a little bit splotchy, um, just in some areas. Uh, the black monolith, like I said, um, the blue detail on the bottom uh, reads a lot better on the 2011 version. So, um, you can see that right there. But realistically, they're the same figure. Honestly, if you were to get one and you don't really want to shout out the money for the exclusive one, I would recommend uh, just getting the more um, readily available one, which is the re-released version. So, yeah, so that's basically that. Um, one thing I will say, though, a good tip is that these parts do articulate, but unfortunately, pushing them all the way out will actually spread apart this part of the black monolith, and that will stop it from putting itself into the or um, kind of pegging into the stand. So I recommend when you're pegging it into the stand, you want to actually um, push these wings together, which will allow you to collapse these parts in and then just peg it right in. Um, if you get this figure and you're having problems with that, you'll definitely understand what I mean when I say that. But uh, it's a very elegant figure. Um, now I'll go ahead and bring in Inori, which is also a good smile figure. And they look really well together. And just for another comparison here is the Nendroid Lacia from Beatless as well. So just all of them together, they look really nice. Um, if I were to prefer to get one, in terms of if they were the same price and whatnot, I would actually get the 2011 exclusive version because the black monolith is a lot nicer on that one. It has a more um, kind of like mystical sort of paint job on it. This one's a little bit more lighter and um, you know, it's it kind of depends on how you want to put Leisha in your collection. Uh, now, granted, there actually is a newer version coming out, which is the Black Monolith uh, Expanded one, which is an entirely new sculpt, so it's a new Leisha sculpt that's based off of the anime, and I think that one just came out uh, this year, so pending delays due to COVID. But um, yeah, so that's basically it for this um, kind of review comparison, just to talk about it. Um, it'd be nice just for everyone to kind of understand more about the figure and just kind of for me to share what I have. To, so everyone else can kind of use this information to kind of, you know, know what they're purchasing. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, stay tuned for more other stuff.